Hello there, Aquarius. Welcome to your weekly reading. Um, so once again, love reading for the first five cards and then your general energy. Spiritual advice too, I feel, coming through for the second five cards, okay? Um, this is your energy here. We have the world and uh, this is a state of completion. Something has just kind of uh, culminated and decided upon and uh, sort of like um, a new direction is taking place in your own life. When you are vibrating at the frequency of a major arcana card, it means that a lot of good things are, I feel like you're attracting a lot of good things into your life, okay? And we're not just talking love relationships because, you know, those things are nice, but um, it, it, I feel like it's, it's a major arcana card. So it deals a lot more with dreams, goals, aspirations, the ending of a cycle so that you can begin something brand new with a lot of hope and a lot of prosperity. And I feel like there's a lot of things happening in your own life where you're trying to kind of like change the direction of your life. You're also trying as well to let go of past patterns, past way of doings and things like that from your past so that you can move on to this next phase in your life uh, unencumbered and free and a lot more, I want to say like self-aware. And when you're at this frequency, I feel like, you know, you're naturally also going to attract a lot of people. Um, you're also going to attract a lot of attention and quite possibly a lot of envy. So um, it's good to keep your ideas close to your chest. If you're implementing some major moves, there are always going to be naysayers talking you out of it or they're going to rain on your parade or they're going to, you know, rather than be uh, really um, happy and hopeful for you, I feel like there's a little bit of envy coming through. And the reason I say that here is I have the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Wands is a state of being where somebody that you're dealing with is very trepidatious. And the Nine of Wands is like someone who's who has been wounded, who's in a state in their own life where they feel kind of, um, I am hearing despair and kind of helpless. And they're seeing all of these major big things happening for you. And I feel like they feel almost like they can't compare. They feel like they're not good enough. And once again, this energy of insecurity coming through from partners, that has, um, you know, I, I talked about that. So if you're in a partnership, somebody feel like they don't measure up and they're trying to step up their game, but it feels like they're way down with a lot of other things that they're trying to sort through. And they feel like they can't really give you what you want what you need from them or they feel like they don't really measure up they feel inadequate in your presence okay and i feel like for some of you this is a partner um somebody that is that works really hard so they're not a lazy person and i i feel like aquarius you, you don't like frivolous lazy self-entitled types of people um this is a person that is very hard working. They work and work and work at things until they can no longer exert any more energy until it's broken. So they, their mentality is work hard at it and everything will, you know, flow their way. But, you know, sometimes um, things are just aren't meant to be. So no matter how much work and effort we put into it, it's not going to yield the result that we're looking for. So you're dealing with somebody like this. Um, very stuck in their own lives, feeling a little bit inadequate in your presence, wanting to make an offer and seeing all the, the, the prosperity and the love and the attractiveness and everything else that you bring to the table. And they feel like they don't really measure up. So they're in a state of indecisiveness. On the one hand, they really want to make that communion with you, that contact, that, um, you know, solidify a relationship. But on the other hand, they just feel as if, they're not worthy almost like they feel like they're not good enough and they feel very trepidatious and they also feel like how is this going to work out so there there's some blockages i feel between you and a significant other or they if it's you and a crush i definitely feel like the mutual energy is there where they're very very attracted to you they're looking at you and we have the world here and the world in the palm of his hand so it's almost like you have the world in the palm of your hands you have this person's attention and they see you like this. They see you as the world. They see you as someone who is very beautiful, exotic, prosperous, and you have a lot of things going on for yourself. 
And so they're also like, why would the Aquarius person look at me? So for those of you dealing with a crush, it's almost like they're intimidated by your energy and they wish they could, you know, they really admire you and they wish they could kind of like be on your level. But they've got a lot of baggage here that they're not able to free themselves from, okay? Um, for those dealing with a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, I, I see this being very prevalent where there's a lot of attraction them to you. And, um, you know, you, you like them, but you also have a lot of other things on your mind. So it's not like you're contemplating and thinking about them 24-7. They might be the one that's really stuck and really want to reach out and really want to solidify some type of a relationship with you, but they feel a little bit inadequate. And then on the other front, I have uh, two other people. For those of you dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And um, what I know about you Aquarius people, if you love somebody, and it, it, even if it's like, um, if you have a crush on someone and they try to act cute and you know, they're emotionally needy, it's, it can be very flattering, right? Like if we like somebody, we put up with their quirks and we put up with things that are not very attractive. So you have somebody that's a little bit emotionally needy. And for some of you, it's almost like if you like them, then it's cute. It's, um, it's adorable if they sh show that side of themselves. And it makes you feel like, wow, they, they like me. They, they want me, you know. And that's fine because if we like them, then naturally it, it's cute. But on the other hand, if they overstep their boundaries or if they overestimate their importance in your life and they kind of do this massive emotional dump on you, then it can feel very, very repulsive. Like you're, you're really, you know, repulsed by it. And your response to them is silence. That's what I'm sensing. I feel like you're not able to reciprocate this emotional connection anymore because you know if you don't like them you don't care about them then it's just going to be that emotional need or emotional neediness it feels really really heavy and uncomfortable and awkward and your response to it is always going to be like total dead silence so we have a water sign here wanting to make a connection wanting to be either in a relationship with you, wanting to, you know, be amorous with you, wanting to be physical with you. So Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And if it's a partner, I feel like they feel neglected. So everything that you've got going on, you kind of need to take care of this partner, okay? If it's somebody from the past and you don't really care about, I feel like there's going to be communication coming through. And I, I see like silence from your end, mainly because you're vibrating here and they're here and so the energy doesn't really match up and because of that it's awkward for you you don't like to deal with emotional awkwardness so you're not going to respond on the other hand we have another person as well we have the lovers and the lover is about choices and decisions and also feeling very physically attracted to another person and so I feel like there is and you know, both of these are major arcana cards. So I'm looking more at you have somebody in mind and you're contemplating, you know, is this going to slow down my life? Is this a situation? And I feel like, you know, if you look at the world card and this woman here in the lovers, it's almost the same person. So there's definitely somebody that you are really, really attracted to, but your life is expanding. Opportunities are opening up for you. And so you're contemplating and you're racking your brains trying to figure out, you know, how is this going to work? Is this going to restrict me? That's also a big fear for Aquarius. And you like to, you know, project into the future to figure out if I get involved with this person, what's going to happen? How are things going to play out? And I also feel as well, you know, the other person might be in another relationship and you don't want to be the one that gets into messy entanglements because emotional messiness, that can also be like a, a major, major deal breaker for Aquarius. And so I feel like, you know, you want a connection really, really badly, but you don't want it to curb your independence. 
and you're you can't for the life of you figure out how this person is going to fit into your future, into the greater scheme of things, into your plans for your own future. So it's a it's a major tug of war. Emotionally, you want this, but then emotionally you also want the the independence. So the the physical connection is really strong. The chemistry, the sexual passion, and you know the the way you feel about the other person, it's a really strong energy. But how is it going to fit into your bigger plans?、Um, you might be dealing with water sign here. So I have fire, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, as well as a Gemini person here.、Um, So let me just see what's coming in here with the lovers card. So we have here the Eight of Cups, and the Eight of Cups is emotionally moving on to from one person. So you have emotionally moved on from somebody from your past. You're now free, possibly very, very single, and you're seeing a new relationship here with the lovers. Which is a relationship that is very karmic. So this card, when it shows up in a love reading, it is is a very very good card, where it shows a lot of caring,、uh, you know, roughing things out, riding things out through thick and thin, wanting to be with another person because you want to alleviate their problems, you want to help them, they want to help you, and there is a also a lot of risk associated with this card because I pulled it out here for the lovers. Um, feeling as if if we get into this connection, you know, emotionally, am I going to be fulfilled? And then also financially, how is this going to play out? So there are a lot of things that you're considering when it comes to a big, big relationship in your life. So I see fire sign, water sign, as well as a Gemini person、um, that's in the picture here. And I'm also sensing as well if you're dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, they might be, you know, reaching out to you, or they might be wanting to have a physical connection, or even some type of a soul, spiritual connection. But I feel as if you have moved away from it, and you're moving into something that you feel is karmically better for you, or you feel like it's a very, very strong karmic tie. I do see a very strong karmic tie that you have with another person, where the two of you are trying to work together, and I feel. As well, the energy is we don't give up on each other. We don't check out. We don't run away when things get tough, and we talk about uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable topics because you know we're trying to make things work. So I, I feel like there's a major maturation process or a relationship that requires a lot of self-awareness and growth from your end, from their end as well, in order to make it a reality. Okay, it's like you can't run from it anymore. You have to sit there and face whatever it is. Whatever conditions, whatever demands, whatever it is that they need from you, you can't run from it anymore. So there's some type of a binding energy here where you can't just, you know, live for yourself anymore. You have to take into account the feelings of your relationship partner because you're trying to make things work, and you really feel like they are worth it for you to work this out with. They're worth it, and you're willing to sit through countless uncomfortable. Conversations, uncomfortable emotional demands, because you feel that they are worth it. So, I would say it's a little bit of a emotionally heavy week, but this is something you guys need because I feel like lots of things are going your way and lots of things are happening for you guys. But emotionally, you still have to grow as a person, and this is the week where you know that's going to be. Well, the, the 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 energy is supported of that. Okay,、um, in other areas of your life. So this is other areas, and I feel like a, a major blending of work and romance. So you could be working from home. You could be dating somebody you're working with. You can also, you know, your partner might be at home, and I feel like you know. Uh, times might be hard, and your partner is not working. Or times might be hard, you're not working, your partner is working. So I feel this element about somebody like blending of the home environment as well as the work environment, or blending of the love environment with the work environment. So those are 
things that you need to keep in mind. Try to separate the two, or at least emotionally and energetically, try to you know、um, separate so that you don't get affected. Okay. So other areas of your life, I feel like there is a falling out with somebody. So we have here the Ace of Cups, and the Ace of Cups is like a situation where we no longer feel passionate, inspired,、um, hopeful. Or even emotionally invested in anymore. So, for many of you, this is a work environment that you're in. We have the Hierophant and the Knight of Pentacles. The Hierophant deals with institutions, and I'm going to talk about the family situation in a little bit. But I feel like it's heavily about new work offers or new work conditions, or 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 like promotions in the workplace, or like projects that you're given from higher ups, and you have to do them, and you just have to. It's like whatever they dictate, you have to follow, and you know we don't like restrictions. Aquarius people do not work well in an environment that is too rigid. You like to inject your own ingenuity and your own, you know, unpredictability into things that you do. You don't like to follow routine, even though you understand that you know rules and regulations keep a work environment safe. I feel like it's a little bit too structured and rigid, and it's.、Um, Stifling your creativity, you can't really have fun, and so you're really reassessing. You know what can I do differently? Reassessing whether or not the work is meant for you, and then reassessing as well.、Um, I also feel like reassessing whether or not the structured, rigid work environment is right for you as well. And then I'm also sensing this falling out,、um, possibly you know with an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, seeing them in a different light, seeing somebody in a different light—it's like you think they're one way, and then they turn around and they're another way. And so, if it's somebody on the professional front, they're saying that they're just practical. This is the way that they are, and they might have to shift strategy to get what they want, so they can be a little bit more on the self-serving end. When it's in the upright position, they're very, very slow. So you might be really frustrated with somebody who works really, 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 really slowly. Or they're such a stickler for rules and regulations that it kind of drives you nuts. Okay, like they're they're so slow to act. They sit on projects and ideas forever, and they don't really implement them. And they also just you know they follow rules and regulations to a T, and they do it so much that it's almost like they're not even thinking independently. So it's somebody who's such a stickler for rules. Um, I'm also feeling as well,、um, like waiting on an apology. Somebody waiting on an apology could be family members, and it's like one person is very closed off. The other person is waiting for an offer. One person is really closed off, and then it's like the love is definitely there. If it's family that you're dealing with, you know,、um, try not to be so harsh. Okay. Um, you you can be very harsh too, especially if somebody, especially if somebody、um, that you care about, but not really. When they make like a lot of, when they feel entitled to make a lot of emotional demands on you, or they try to give you, you know, demands and ultimatums and things like that, and you don't really care about their feelings as much. And so when they do that, it makes you even want to kind of like put them in their place. And tell them like, oh, you're not that important to me. You shouldn't be making these demands. It, it makes you feel that way, and it makes you want to do that to them. And I feel like some of you might have done it. And I also feel like you might have、um, said some harsh things to somebody that you love too, because you feel like they're stuck in the past. And then I also feel this energy playing out in the work environment and also with family members, where. There's a there needs to be an apology because the love is definitely there, and you're being stubborn, very very stubborn about it, and they're being very stubborn about it. So no one's like you know breaking the ice and talking first. And I feel like family in particular, okay, and especially in the work environment,、um, it's so important for you to you know keep your ideas to yourself. Keep your plans, whatever it is that you're thinking about.、Um, if it's not finalized yet, keep them to yourself, okay? And um, just um, you've got a lot of good things coming into the picture, and I feel like you're trying to break free. And I feel like the environment that you're in right now is doesn't serve its purpose anymore. So 
take the opportunity and try to break free. Okay, don't let other people、um, kind of talk you out of it. All right. So I'm gonna stop the reading here.、Um, honestly, a little bit of just like emotional demands coming from people, and they think like they have you know high priority in your life, but they really don't. And it's not about you know us being mean, right? I, I don't feel like it's the Aquarius person. You're you're very kind and you're not mean. But when someone overstepped their boundaries and they're making all these emotional demands, and it's always like. Who are you? Why are you? You know, why do you think I'm going to cater to you? I see some of you、uh, thinking as well. I don't even do this for my mom. What makes you think I will do it for you? I, I feel some of you like thinking that, not out loud, just you know thinking that, but not really saying it to another person. But you feel like you want to say it to another person because they're overstepping their boundary. So、um, just be a little bit more patient with people this week, okay? Um, I hope the reading is helpful, and I hope that you know you're able to get through this week. Okay, just、um, you know, slow and steady. Okay, take care of yourself, Aquarius. I'll see you next week.